Hello everyone and welcome to another episode, where we uncover the secrets and scandals of the past. Today we are going to talk about one of the most famous and controversial women in history, Cleopatra, the last queen of ancient Egypt. But who was Cleopatra and why is she so famous? And how did she use her charm and intelligence to seduce two of the most powerful men in the world, Julius Caesar and Mark Antony? Cleopatra was born in 69 BC, as a member of the Ptolemaic dynasty, a Greek family that ruled Egypt since the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC. The Ptolemies were known for their incestuous marriages, their lavish lifestyles, and their ruthless intrigues. Cleopatra was no exception. She was educated in Greek and Egyptian culture, literature, philosophy, science, and politics. She was also fluent in several languages, including Latin, Hebrew, Arabic, and Ethiopian. Cleopatra became the queen of Egypt at the age of 18, after the death of her father Ptolemy XII in 51 BC. She was supposed to rule jointly with her younger brother Ptolemy XIII, who was also her husband, according to the custom of the Ptolemies. However, Cleopatra soon faced a power struggle with her brother and his advisors, who tried to exclude her from the throne. Cleopatra fled to Syria, where she raised an army to reclaim her crown. Meanwhile, Egypt was also involved in the civil war that was raging in Rome between Julius Caesar and Pompey, two of the most influential generals and politicians of the Roman Republic. Pompey had been defeated by Caesar at the Battle of Pharsalus in 48 BC and sought refuge in Egypt. However, he was assassinated by Ptolemy XIII's agents upon his arrival, hoping to please Caesar and secure his support. Caesar arrived in Egypt shortly after and was presented with Pompey's severed head. Caesar was not pleased by this act of treachery and demanded that Ptolemy XIII and Cleopatra settle their dispute peacefully. This was the opportunity that Cleopatra had been waiting for. She knew that Caesar was the key to her restoration and survival. She also knew that Caesar was a man of great ambition and appetite, both for power and for women. She decided to use her charm and wit to win him over. She smuggled herself into Caesar's palace in Alexandria, wrapped in a carpet that was delivered as a gift. When Caesar unrolled the carpet, he found Cleopatra inside, ready to seduce him with her beauty and intelligence. The plan worked. Caesar was captivated by Cleopatra and became her lover. He also sided with her against her brother and fought a war against him and his allies. Ptolemy XIII drowned in the Nile during the Battle of the Nile in 47 BC, leaving Cleopatra as the sole ruler of Egypt. Caesar then proclaimed Cleopatra and her younger brother Ptolemy XIV as co-rulers of Egypt and married them according to Egyptian law. He also fathered a son with Cleopatra, whom they named Caesar Ion, meaning Little Caesar. Cleopatra followed Caesar to Rome in 46 BC, where she lived in a luxurious villa on the banks of the Tiber River. She hoped that Caesar would recognize Caesarion as his heir and make him the king of Egypt and Rome. However, she faced hostility and resentment from many Romans, who saw her as a foreign queen who had bewitched their leader and threatened their republic. Caesar himself had many enemies who feared his growing power and popularity. On March 15, 44 BC, the Ides of March, Caesar was assassinated by a group of senators led by Brutus and Cassius who claimed to be saving Rome from tyranny. Cleopatra returned to Egypt after Caesar's death, where she had Ptolemy XIV killed and made Caesar Ion her co-ruler. She also faced a new threat from Rome, Octavian, later Augustus, Caesar's adopted son and heir, who had formed an alliance with Mark Antony and Lepidus to avenge his murder and take control of Rome. They formed a triumvirate that divided the Roman world among themselves. Octavian took the West, Italy, Spain, Gaul, Antony took the East, Greece, Asia Minor, Syria, and Lepidus took Africa, except Egypt. Antony was the one who had to deal with Cleopatra, who was still considered an ally of Caesar and a potential enemy of Rome. He summoned her to Tarsus, in modern Turkey, in 41 BC, to question her loyalty and demand her support. Cleopatra decided to repeat her strategy with Caesar and seduce Antony with her charm and wealth. She arrived in Tarsus on a magnificent barge, dressed as the goddess Aphrodite, surrounded by music, flowers, and servants. She invited Antony to join her on her barge, 
where she entertained him with lavish banquets, exotic perfumes, and erotic games. Antony was enchanted by Cleopatra and became her lover. He followed her to Egypt, where he spent the winter of 41 to 40 BC in a state of bliss and indulgence. He also married her according to Egyptian law and fathered three children with her, two twins, a boy and a girl, named Alexander Helios, son, and Cleopatra Selene, moon, and another boy named Ptolemy Philadelphus, brotherly love. He also gave Cleopatra and her children many territories and titles, making them the rulers of a vast empire that stretched from Egypt to India. However, Antony's affair with Cleopatra had serious consequences for his political career and his relations with Octavian. Antony neglected his duties as a triumvir and alienated many of his supporters and allies in Rome. He also divorced his wife Octavia, who was Octavian's sister, in 32 BC, breaking the bond that had kept the two men together. Octavian used this as an excuse to declare war on Antony and Cleopatra, accusing them of plotting against Rome and aspiring to create a new monarchy in the East. The war between Octavian and Antony culminated in the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, a naval battle that took place near the coast of Greece. Octavian's fleet was commanded by his friend and admiral Agrippa, while Antony's fleet was commanded by Cleopatra herself, who had insisted on joining him in the battle. The battle was a disaster for Antony and Cleopatra, who were outnumbered and outmaneuvered by Octavian's forces. Cleopatra panicked and fled with her ships, followed by Antony, who abandoned his men and his honor. They escaped to Egypt, where they hoped to regroup and resist Octavian's invasion. However, their hopes were soon dashed by Octavian's relentless pursuit and their own loss of support and morale. Many of Antony's soldiers and allies defected to Octavian or committed suicide. Antony himself tried to kill himself after hearing a false rumor that Cleopatra had died, but he only wounded himself and was brought to Cleopatra's palace, where he died in her arms. Cleopatra then tried to negotiate with Octavian, who wanted to capture her alive and parade her as a trophy in his triumph in Rome. She realized that she had no chance of escaping or preserving her dignity. She chose to end her life by allowing an ASP, a venomous snake, to bite her breast, according to the most popular version of her death. She died in 30 BC, at the age of 39, along with her two loyal servants Charmian and Iares. With the death of Antony and Cleopatra, the Ptolemaic dynasty came to an end and Egypt became a province of the Roman Empire. Octavian became the first emperor of Rome under the name Augustus, ushering in a new era of peace and prosperity known as the Pax Romana. Caesar Ion, the son of Caesar and Cleopatra, was killed by Octavian's orders, while the other children of Antony and Cleopatra were spared and raised by Octavia in Rome. Cleopatra's legacy has been preserved and distorted by various sources and interpretations throughout history. She has been portrayed as a heroine or a villainess, a lover or a manipulator, a queen or a whore. She has inspired countless works of art, literature, drama, film, and music. She has become a symbol of beauty, power, passion, and tragedy. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video, Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos on history's secrets and scandals. And don't forget to leave a comment below with your thoughts and questions.